What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, J-Main, back checking in with the people. Man, I just got finished watching that. I don't know what the hell you want to call it. EA play, press conference, whatever. It was typical EA bullshit, man. I mean, god damn. Like, if you were expecting any surprises from EA this year at their conference, literally nothing new was announced that, you know, they blew anybody away with. You know what I'm saying? If you were expecting to see Skate 4, dead. Dead Space Reboot, dead. I mean, anything from EA, a new IP that we actually got to see um, them play on stage, dead. None of that. None of that. Now, I'm going to run through the list of stuff that they showed. And I'm going to kind of give my thoughts and opinions on how I felt about this stuff. So, Madden 18 Story Mode. Now, uh, it looks like Microsoft is going to continue to have the marketing rights for this. But they only show you know, a cinematic trailer of what's going on in the story mode. Now, I ain't gonna front. This Madden story mode looks good. It has drama to it. It has character, um, some humor in there. Like, this story mode looks like it can be something that people, uh, you know, gravitate towards like they did the FIFA story. Because I think I've heard pretty good things about the FIFA um, story mode. And speaking of FIFA, they're actually bringing the sequel to that story mode back for FIFA 18 as well. So, you know, EA is big on their sports, Madden, FIFA, and even at NBA Live. Now, they show NBA Live gameplay. i seen this trailer that leaked that they kind of showed again today. But they also showed, like, this tournament mode that they had going on. Like, the modes for NBA Live, I think, are pretty damn good. But the game itself still lacks. Like, the visuals got a little bit better. But the facial animations, the way the players move, like, that stuff, which is key in a basketball game, they have not got that right. I don't know... What they can do to, <laughs> at this point, is like, they might just want to give up. In my opinion, they should bring back the street games. I know they're not going to do that, but, you know, they got to keep competition with 2K, and they're just not doing it. The last game sold, like, 8,000 copies or something like that in the first month or some shit. Some crazy number that was like, no way that could be real, you know what I'm saying? And it doesn't look like people are going to even gravitate towards this one. I mean, the demo is supposed to be coming out in August. I'm going to try the demo because I can only speak from a visual perspective. When I play it, I'll be able to, you know, give more opinions and thoughts. But just looking at it from a distance, it's like, nope, that's not it. Like, you'll, it's, when it comes to basketball games, to me personally, you know when something is it. Just by looking at it almost, you're like, all right, that has potential. That's, it's something there. When you look at NBA Live, it's like, nope, they still in learn. <laughs> so it's like, I, I don't know what they're going to do with that damn game. I'm going to try it. And we're going to go from there. Next up, uh, they were talking about Battlefield 1. Now, Battlefield 1, of course, was a, a great game. They brought it back to the World War I. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a success sales-wise. And the DLC is continuing. They're bringing new maps, uh, night mode, uh, female uh, soldiers. Like, I believe it's... Uh, I forget what they called it, but it's a bunch of female soldiers they add into it. And it looks as good as ever, you know what I'm saying? Battlefield 1 was one of my favorite games of last year. And... For them to continue to support it throughout the year, at least until probably Star Wars Battlefront 2 comes out. That's dope to see. So the game getting better. Can't can't be mad at that. Next up, I want to talk about Need for Speed Payback. Now, one of my hopes and wishes was for EA to bring back Burnout. Because Burnout Paradise was one of my favorite racing games. You know, it had that action to it on top of being a, just a dope-ass racing game. Customization and all the other good stuff. So... When I was watching this gameplay for Need for Speed Payback, and I tell y'all, it got me Burnout Paradise vibes from the slow motion crashes and, you know, all the action going on, um, car parts on flames all throughout the streets and you're chasing down this big truck. I'm, I'm assuming they're trying to, you know, perform a heist. And I was just like, yo, this, this gameplay is blowing me away right now. And I'm, I'm probably going to end up picking up Need for Speed because when it comes to racing games for me, I like it when it's more than just racing. Like, give me an objective to do. Uh, give me some cars to take out, some enemies that are chasing after me. Like, I'm not just the type to pick up a simulation racing game and have fun with it. You know, those kind of bore me. So, when we're talking like Mario Kart, that has weapons to it. You know what I'm saying? A, a whole nother twist to just racing. Uh, Need for Speed Payback looks to be like Burnout, where you're crashing into cars and you're trying to perform a heist. And it has like a deep story to it. So, that gameplay right there alone was enough for me to like, okay, this is on my radar now, and I'm, I can't wait to pick that up. 
um another game they talked about was a way out now a way out is part of the ea originals which i'm assuming is more of their indie like double a development side where it's not triple a but these uh you know these developers these concepts are something that they want to put money behind put not indie money but not triple a money something in the middle now uh these developers i believe were the developers of a brother's tale which I think was like a game where you control two brothers, but like the left stick was one character and the right stick was another character. Now this game seems to be on a broader scale. Uh, it's a third person game and it has like a, a nice co-op aspect to it. The one thing that threw me off is that even though it has online co-op as well as couch co-op, even if you play it online, it's split screen. Now we were in the press start, uh, we kind of did a live reaction and we were talking about it because I wasn't really feeling that online with split screen, but Erica, shout out to Erica, um, she brought up that it would be pretty dope because now when you guys are working together, um, I believe they're in prison and they're you know trying to break out is what they kind of showed us at the beginning of the gameplay. And you got to think like when you guys are trying to plot something, it will actually be pretty dope to see what the other player is doing so you can kind of feed off of that without having to have like, that one-to-one -one communication at all times. So whether communication breaks down, you can always look at him and be like, okay, he's here, so let me try and figure out something where I can help him out so we can complete this mission. So I thought that was pretty dope. It's a game that I want to check out. I don't know if there's going to be a single-player aspect to it. I think it's like co-op only, but it has online, so if you need to search for a player to play with, I think that's pretty dope. And I'm, I'm probably going to check this out. It looks pretty good. Uh, the visuals and the animations, you know, they need a little bit of work. But again, I said it's like a double-A kind of indie game. So you can't really expect too much from it. But I think it could be a little bit better um, for what they're showing us. I think the game has a lot of potential. So A Way Out is a new IP that they got coming out. I don't know if I heard a release date, but I'm hoping to see that later this year. Maybe it'll be early next year because, like I said, it kind of did look a little rough in my opinion. But moving on um ea access origin access and of course ps4 doesn't have ea access because sony decided that it wasn't a good value even though that should be up to the fans anyway i guess ps4 is going to be getting some free games or trials uh, ea access and origin access are free for the week so if you have those platforms that support that make sure you get on that play some games um ea has a, a couple good games on there that i think people should check out unraveled it's one that I think people should check out. If you haven't played any of the Battlefield games, those are on there. Mirror's Edge, uh, Star Wars Battlefront, the first one. Like, all those pretty decent, dope games. And, of course, you got your sports titles. That'll be dope to check out. Maybe you can purchase it because if you have EA Access, I believe you get discounts on those games. So, check those out if you are interested. Um, I talked about FIFA already. We talked about the story mode, you know, getting a sequel. So, that's pretty good. Um, New IP, another one. They announced two new IPs here at the conference. The second one was more on the AAA side. It was BioWare's new project. Some people know it as Project Dylan, but they finally fully revealed the title and it's gonna be called Anthem. Now rumors are that this is gonna be an MMO game that's gonna rival Destiny. And what they said on stage is that they're gonna show a teaser today. Tomorrow's gonna to be kind of the full reveal at Microsoft's conference. So while I was okay with that, on the other side, I had problems with that because this is your conference. If you're going to keep showing games and be like, okay, you can see more tomorrow, what's the point of you showing it at all? They could have just revealed this at Microsoft's conference tomorrow, but they want to be the first to reveal it, I guess, even though they didn't show us nothing but a 30-second teaser trailer with a couple cliche lines and you see a couple characters like walking through um, this kind of torn, run-down building or whatever, and you see like this big beast pop out of the, the forest and stuff like that. So you're really not showing us anything. It kind of looks like a Mass Effect destiny type clone but again we got to see more so tomorrow at microsoft's conference i'm hoping we get a gameplay blowout um on scorpio because i know that shit's gonna look amazing but um i want to see it because if it is truly a destiny killer it'll be interesting to see how it performs against destiny if it even comes out this year so anthem i'm interested in seeing more and last but not least definitely not least i mean this to me was the best thing they showed star wars battlefront 2 earlier in the day the gameplay for Star Wars Battlefront 2 leaked. And I personally looked at that gameplay and said, this looks like an improvement over last year's. The visuals look better. To me, the camera angle was much, it was brought down more, even though you can play it in third third and first person. I felt like the third person camera was brought down a little bit more and it felt a little bit more personal in third person view. 
But I mean, from all the heroes that they showed, Darth Maul was fucking beast. And I mean, that's probably gonna be my go-to hero. Darth Maul is a savage in that game. They showed um, new vehicles. Uh, they showed air combat, ground combat. It was just an all-out 30 minutes of multiplayer gameplay. Now, some people wasn't really feeling, you know, them just showing 30 minutes of gameplay at their conference. I'm okay with it if it's a game that looks amazing. In Star Wars Battlefront, it just looks amazing. And on top of that, they uh, talked about the story mode, how they're listening to fans, and how like the DLC rollout is gonna be different. So they really wanted to put the emphasis on content, content, content. They heard everybody last time with Star Wars felt bare bones, and they're coming with the content this year, and they're gonna, you know, right their wrongs essentially with which what they did wrong in the first Battlefront. So the beta is supposed to be coming out this fall, I believe if you pre-order. And I thought maybe they should have did it earlier, especially if it's going to be like a stress test because you want to get those kinks ironed out before the game come out. But that's just me. We'll see what they do. Uh, overall, the conference, you know, I talked highly about a couple of these games, but as a conference, it the format is lacking. They do a lot of talking. And some people, when you're watching that, it's not fun to watch. Um, if they kind of just narrowed it down to somebody comes out a couple minutes talking about you know, maybe some development on the game and then go right into the gameplay. Give us that five, 10 minute gameplay trailer and move on, move on, move on. They spend way too much time talking, way too much time with these YouTube personalities that to be honest, probably don't give a damn about these games. And it's just too much cringe worthy, cringe worthy shit on these stages that they gotta cut down, cut down, cut down because it's just too much. You can cut down at least, I think that conference was like an hour or two. You can cut down like half of that and make it a more tightly knit conference and more streamlined where it's just gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. And will they do that? Probably not because EA is not coming with that that content that's new and surprising. So again, we ain't getting nothing that we predicted <laughs> for EA's conference. No Skate 4, no new Sims, no, no new Burnout, even though Need for Speed is kind of looking like that. No Dead Space reboot, none of that. So I'm disappointed. Originally, I gave this conference a six after talking with the team and thinking about it more. I'm probably leaning like a 4.5 or a five for this conference because I liked a couple things, but the format was just terrible and we didn't see nothing new. But that's my review for EA's conference. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys thought about it. Like the channel. What am I talking about? Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Rate the video. Let me know what you thought. Of course, down in the comment section. And I'll catch y'all tomorrow. I'll be live streaming again for Microsoft and Bethesda. And I'll have reviews for both of those conferences sometime after the show. I'm out. Peace.